Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another Singles Club ink profile. Today we're going to do the Tasha, uh, I think it's pronounced Die Die, but I'm not sure. It's orange, and it's a nice bright orange, and we got lots of comparisons. And I'm excited about this because I happen to like orange. So, let's dive right in. Let's see how this ink does in the bath test. <laughs> They haven't all been the same, the Tasha inks. They they do behave differently depending on the saturation and and you name it. So it it's been interesting to say the least to to uh you know discover these. There, okay. That's kind of what I thought. That is much lighter and it seems like the water wants to lift it quickly. Okay, this is the pink one, the uh Tasha Momo, just so you can see the results. You can still read it. But it's very blurry and it's, you know, it, it doesn't look good. So, you know, that's typical though. I'm not criticizing it. We just like to see how, how permanent is it or how, um, you know, resistant is it to the water. So we'll let that work its magic. Um, and we'll start as usual in my Rhodia Goal Book, uh, which is my primary ink journal. So, here we go. And uh, I ran out of the regular chromatography strips, so this is a, a piece of uh, coffee filter. And I'm really not sure till I compare, let's see, maybe if I get my hands out of the way. Because you can see a little chromatography there, but I like the other better, so I'll be looking into getting some more as soon as I can. So there's that, for what it's worth. And here we are. Um, all of this was written in the broad nib and the serendipity with the uh, broad yo-wo nib. And then I put it on a little piece of Tomoe River paper. Uh, wasn't real, you know, there's no sheen or anything, but it's just a beautiful orange color in my opinion. And then we drop down into the Lamy fine nib here. Um, this, okay, in my first impressions... I wrote that this is the lightest shade of the Tasha inks that I've tried. And it is. Uh, the rest of them were darker and more saturated, but they were also different colors. And so we have to compare this with other orange inks. That way it can be fair. And that's what we're going to do. So I found it. it is also available at Pen Chalet, Anderson Pens, Vanessa, and Drom Ghouls. And I got my little sample from Pen Chalet. It's a four, or it was a four mil sample. I run right through these pretty quick because I like the ink. Now at the very bottom here, this is in my Moonman mini glass nib. So it's sort of more like a medium nib. I mean, that's just a generalization, but mine is anyway. Um, so there we have it. Okay, let's move on. I've got three notebooks. I decided to keep this little uh, CVS caliber memo book in the rotation because I'm I'm learning from this and so I think it's good for us. Um, here it is on that and uh, it, it was in the broad nib down to here and then I just wrote a little bit with the Lamy fine nib and I didn't label it. Let's do that because I really don't want to come back here months later. At least I can put fine Lamy on there. And then I'll know what's going on. Okay. I do forget sometimes. Okay, let's turn that over and see how it did. Okay, so when you blotch on with a paintbrush, you're going to get some show through. That To me, that's not even quite bleed through yet. But, you know, it's there. and But you can still write over that. So that's not too bad. Let's compare it to the Momo. So this was the Tasha Momo. And that did, yeah, that went through quite a bit more, but that was a more saturated color, I, th I believe. Okay, so there, there was that. And that's actually pretty decent for, you know, such cheap paper. And uh, uh, I don't remember feeling like it was too bad. Definitely was good in the broad nib. Sometimes it feels a little draggy in a fine nib on this paper. So let's go into this one. This is the little Nemesine notebook. That I got in an ink flight box. And uh, this gives us a, a real chance to see the the, <laughs> the wide range of this ink. I, I guess I must have made a, a blotch there. That's too bad. Um, but you know you can kind of see the lighter aspects of it. And then all the way to the dark dark. And I don't, don't see sheen or anything. But you can definitely see that, uh, that color coming out. And this again is in the Moon Man Mini Glass Nib. Um, I really like this color, and which is saying a lot because I have a small bottle of Diamine 
pumpkin and I like that and there's a lot of other pretty ones that I'll show you um, so there was that one and then finally this is the cafe note by Nanami Paper Company. It has Tamoy River paper with a seven mil uh, line grid. Okay, on this paper I did notice kind of a, a more of a difference in from the broad nib down to the fine nib, but that happens quite a bit. And so um, I was much happier with that darker orange color on the left myself, personally. So things are going well with my intermittent fasting and low carb. Um, you know, I had some cramps last night, but every time we get a severe cold um, front, and my friends up north would laugh because this is not severe to them. It's like 40s with wind chills in the 30s, and it's above zero. But for for me to go from 83 down to 43 with 30 wind chills, ugh, I had cramps in my right foot, and I really don't believe it was anything I did diet-wise because it was I've been doing the exact same thing every day. But anyway... This, at least you can see the difference. I do notice it is quite a bit lighter in the Lamy Fine Nib. Um, on this paper anyway. And we'll take a look at it on, on a whole bunch of other papers. Okay. Starting with uh, the, the regular Tamoy River paper, the 52 gram. Here it is. And actually, it, it, you know, there wasn't quite as much of a changeover with this, I didn't think. So apparently it's, the paper is different. Well, you can see that it is, but I'm not so sure why, and I need to investigate that, what the difference is in the paper. Somebody watching probably knows. Um, but here it is in the broad nib and the fine nib, and then a little uh, painted on swatch. And when we turn it over, we don't have any bleed through, except for where, you know, it, it was put on so heavily with the, the paintbrush. So, very typical. Okay. Here is the Rhodia Dark Grid 80 gram paper. It's white. Let me try to get hold it up there for you. And so in the top is the broad Yowo nib and the bottom is the Lamy Fine nib. A very nice experience with that, by the way, I, I thought. And I know that's just my opinion. But. Okay, this down here was an accident. <laughs> Sorry, way down here. Uh, but this didn't go through the way the uh, Tasha Momo did. That one did bleed through. That was the pink, but the orange is here, and, and it didn't bleed through. So that was very interesting. Okay, here's the Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper. Um, oh, I like how you can see the variation in the color on this, too. <clears throat> uh, you know, to my eye, I see some shading on some of these, but it is subtle, or else I'd notice it more, probably. So I'm not going to say that, it's, that a person would purchase it for its shading ability but uh, some people might because it's it's there um, sometimes it looks like it has a, like a little yellow glow to it here's the broad nib and the fi Lamy fine nib and then we'll turn that over same thing the orange didn't go through the uh, dye dye I guess it's called um, and then Momo did a little bit okay Let's see. Ah, the one that we were discussing yesterday. I did a couple, <laughs> couple of uh, reviews on this uh, wonderful paper, this Hamlin Optic 90 gram that I, I got sample from uh, Brian at the pen thing. And here it is down here at the bottom. Looks really nice on here and I can kind of see the, the uh, shading and glow on this paper. It, it turned up on the Claire Fontaine and on this one. Just, just very subtle, but it looks nice. Okay, and let's turn that one over. Okay, we did get a little bit of, uh, you know, bleed through, but that was a heavy paintbrush, you know, just, just so you know. And there's the Momo did the same thing, the pink. All right, we're almost through the paper samples. Here's the Loistrum 1917 dot grid paper. Um, always the inks, you know, if, if they are lighter in a fine nib, they look really good on this paper, in, in my opinion. If you're going to have luck at all, it's going to be on the Loistrum and and some of these other papers that are just a little bit more toothy and uh, thirsty. So there it is in the broad and the Lamy Fine Nib. And <laughs> amazingly, I, I mean, I don't know, it didn't go through. Makes me wonder, did I just go real light? I, I don't think so. I try to do it the same, but I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a human, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you could tell it's Friday. Um, okay. Office Depot College ruled paper. Here it is, and it, it behaves quite similar on this 
than it did on the Loistrum. So there it is, uh, broad up here and Lamy Fine Nim. I mean, that's just a nice juicy orange color. I, I really like it. Every bit as much as Diamine um, Pumpkin. And it didn't really go through. You can see it tried to right here, or at least I can see it. it there's teensy tiny dots that could be considered. Uh, now, de definitely, you know, ghosting, heavy ghosting. Okay, so let's check in on our, aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Now that's the first Tasha ink that we've done that you can't read it anymore. So, I mean, I can say that with confidence. So this is, let's see, the ninth one that I've uh, profiled. And uh, so I believe I, I was making a fair statement that it's a lot less saturated. Uh, sometimes I don't dare say things like that because what do I know? I'm, I'm kind of a beginner, but okay. Let's get our panel because this, I've been waiting to show you this yummy panel. <laughs> it almost makes you hungry for an orange. Um, okay, right smack in the middle is Tasha um, Dye Dye, I'm going to call it. And that's only because I think what I used to think was Daisico is actually Daiso or something. So maybe maybe I'm learning to pronounce it. I don't know. Um, right in the middle. And I did purposely put Diamine Pumpkin next to it. And I think it's interesting that the differences are kind of subtle between the two. Uh very subtle and you can you can probably see for yourself even though I know the camera makes a difference to the than it is in in actual uh, you know to your eyes only it would look different somewhat <clears throat> it's probably brightening things just a little bit but not much okay let's see what else uh, I felt like Mont Blanc Lucky Orange compared very very similar at least on this panel but I would like to see that um, in the same nibs at the same time. I think that would be a worthwhile investigation that I can do. And then this one on the top, let me move it so you can see. See, that's a shimmer ink, the Diamine Inferno Orange. Some of you already know that, but I thought I'd just show you. So I still included it because it's just very quite similar if you just take away the shimmer part. So, And then if you're familiar at all with Karen Dash Electric Orange, that's a lot lighter. Um, it's got that brightness, but not as much saturation, I guess. So, <clears throat> let's see. Robert Oster Orange Zest. I put that down in the left-hand corner here. That's a beautiful ink. Quite a bit darker, though, when you get it in a nib. If, you know, now I'm going by memory. And same thing with Monteverde Mandarin Orange. <clears throat> that's darker and more saturated. I mean, you know, it kind of veers over <clears throat> away from orange just a little, but it's still orange. So then Noodler's Summer Tanager. I just love that, but I'm not sure how I'm going to like it in a nib because seeing it that much lighter, I'm just not so sure. It would pr probably be okay in a broad, um, a stub, you know, but I don't think I'll like it in my medium or fine nibs. And then Noodler's Habanero competed with Apache Sunset for this position here. And I, I don't know, I did some scrawling on a paper, which is probably not even... Oh yeah, here it is. And it wasn't even the right paper to use. And I just, you know, it was just a toss-up, whether to, which one to put. But uh, because they're just, just out of the range, but it was tough to decide what to put on this panel because I have lots of orange inks. So, uh, but it did, Noodler's Habanero made the panel. So, if this was so much fun to make this and to have this orange all around me today on this cold day, uh, for us anyway, which, you know, going from 83 to 43 with wind chills in the 30s, uh, it is just drastic for us here in South Texas this time of the year. So, um, I'll show you what happened on my um, journal, my... Uh, visual journal even though I I wasn't I mean I was very underwhelmed with this <laughs> what it did when you put the water down first and then little globs of ink um probably there was more water on this one than the next one I'll show you and it just sort of washed out um not that it isn't pretty but mm -mm, I wasn't I didn't like it <laughs> so uh I'm fussy about these you know how they come out because I've seen such pretty ones so here's the second one I did and again, it, it sort of got away from me and nothing really stayed. I, I went for a tree here and it just didn't stay. <clears throat> but that's okay. This is an experiment. 
And then this one, I didn't try to divide it. I just put water all down and then did d different blobs. And it was real impressive as it separated, but then it didn't keep the little uh, detail. That was what I found, you know. So that's something to just learn and know, that it just didn't keep the detail. Uh, maybe a different paper. This is a 140 pound Canson watercolor paper. So there, I know there are some better watercolor papers that I haven't yet tried. So that's, that's the review basically. Um, tell me what you think about orange inks. If you have a favorite, um, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And um, because there are so many inks in each color family, there's no way I don't have them all, I'm sure. I'm positive about that. But uh, it's nice to be able to, to compare at least nine on the same panel, and I enjoy that very much. So, as far as what's next, um, the Ink Flight box for February uh, is now en route from New Jersey to Texas. And so it'll be here soon, probably. Maybe early next week. So we've, we're going to have seven new inks, and we don't know what they're going to be. Um, it, there's always a possibility I've already profiled one of them, but we'll see. And then um, I'm choosing from all of the, uh, and I've been going through the, the newcomers in ink samples. And I'd like a little help from you. Could you please put in the comments which major color family you'd most like to see? Um, see, if you made it this far, you get to vote because you know about this. And I'll put it, I'll put it in the description too. So I'm talking about what I'd like is, you know, do you want a purple? Do you want a brown? Do you want a green? Or, let's see what else, um, red, uh, magenta, blue, or uh, in blue you can tell me whether you want a bright blue or a, a darker, like blue-black. So, you know, just make a vote. Just put in the comments if you made it this far, uh, or, you know, if you saw it in the uh, description, what you'd like to see. And I'm, I'm going to give you a glimpse um, now of what I've worked on so that it won't be quite so confusing. I made a little... Um, ring thing whoops sorry about the glare so this this is to help me know what I've already profiled because I've done quite a few so I have done it by um oh and these are um uh, these are stickers that were a gift from a pen friend and they're Lee Pod journal stickers awesome stickers and I had been waiting for something that I would be keeping to put these on <laughs> That's terrible. I didn't want to put them on on pen pal letters. That's horrible. Oh my goodness. But anyway, I wanted to be able to keep them. <laughs> Greedy girl. Okay, so like three oysters and here are the ones I've done. So I, I did it this way because I thought about it and I thought, you know, I'm going to want to look it up by ink company. If I tried doing it by color, it could get more confusing for me. So Aurora, um, Blackstone, Birmingham, <clears throat> Bunga box, you know, there's quite a few here, but I'll I'll take you through them anyway. And uh, Colorverse, I've done three of those. Diatramentus, it was strange to me that I'd only done two, but and then I've done quite a few diamines. Uh, Ferris wheel press, the three that I know of that they have. Franklin Kristoff, only one of those. And then, um, gee, it looks like, oh, we must have had an ink flight with J.R. Bond. That's the reason why there's so many of that. Awesome, because I don't, I don't have that many of them. And then one Quebeco, <laughs> two Krishnas, four KWZ, uh, one Kobe, one Lamy, let's see, two Mont Blanc. I, I, this is just, this is going to work for me. It's, it's, you know, it's how my brain works, I guess. Monteverde, that's, we're getting a good list of, I like Monteverde inks. Noodlers, four of them, okay. I thought there would have been more, but <laughs> probably because we're always comparing, and when we do the panels, there are quite a few noodlers make it on the panels. Papier Plume, there was one. I'm thinking... There was another one, too. I'll have to look back because the bootlegger Sacrament also had another one that wasn't released to the general public. But I must be I didn't profile that one. Okay. A Pelican Edelstein. Pilot Orochizuku. Gee, I'm really underrepresenting Pilot. Only one that I've reviewed. Okay, and then two Platinum Inks. Robert Oster. Okay, there's another one that we had an ink flight, so that 
you know, and this card will last a while. I can write another column and on the back. And I did reinforce them with those little things. Roaring Clinger, I did two. Hmm. I thought I had done Casia, but I don't. I guess not. I really was careful about this. Okay, and then the Tasha, um, which I need to add in the last two, right? Yeah. So I'll leave that open on my desk. Okay, that's the that's the um, <laughs> video for today. I just thought I'd share that with you, and I would appreciate a vote on major color uh, uh, family that you'd like to see, and, and that'll just help me to know what what are the people that are watching and. Um, you know, really wanting to see next for color. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.